all right everybody welcome to your seventh C++ tutorial in which we'll be discussing about something called header files which we have been including in our code since seven tutorials but I haven't explained them well so header files as you can see on the very first line hash include IO stream is a file which we need to include in our code to simply make it work now why this is required um, the reason goes back 30 years so around 30 years back when <coughs> Dennis Ritchie developed C then at that time the technology wasn't so much developed so you know the performance of the computers was not up to the mark so it was necessary that the unusable code should be kept apart and the code which is only required should be brought in the use so by the means of these files what we are basically doing is we are just including um, required code in our code and thus reducing the dependencies so though this was a file uh, this was the system developed by Dennis Ritchie for C it was inherited in C++ as well so about header files what they do is they give you access to a bunch of classes and codes which is already written inside your C++ compiler so for example iostream which we have been using gives you access to C in and C out and many more others so using iostream header file you could actually accept accept the user input and show it as well so that's one way of using iostream then we have something called um, math which we write as math.h in c but now since we are doing c++ then we'd write it the c++ way so we would use cmath dot without any dots okay so I guess I must tell you guys I should tell you that in C what we used to do is we used to append dot edge to every file which stands for header file now this is not required really required in C++ compilers though I guess modern compilers would still support it if you do dot edge here but anyways it's not required so we'll just leave that for now so cmath what it does is it would give you a bunch of access bunch of functions to access like you could calculate the log of two numbers you could um, easily calculate the round of a number a floating point number to upper limit or you could actually um, flow down a number or you could generate a random number or whatever you like to do so cmath would kind of give you access to mathematical functions which we use um, quite often like trigonometric functions or logarithmic and integration differentiation or whatever so one library is cmath now another one I would like to talk with you guys is the string one now string one is a special one as I guess I told you guys that in C and C++ by default there's nothing like string data type inbuilt so we have int char float double um, and what I'm missing int char float double um, yep that's pretty much it so we have mainly these four so int is integer as you know char is characters float is integer with decimals and double is a bigger container for integer with decimals so we don't have any type of string so inside memory how they are stored is like for example when you're storing a character then character takes one byte of memory so right here if you have this as a memory representation though it is not um, like this which is which I have drawn here so the character would be stored something like this in the memory so this every block is one byte 
and an integer would be stored obviously in binary so for example if you are storing 2 then how would it be stored it would be stored like 0 0 0 0 0 0 and right here and I guess this should be 1 so that's how an integer would be stored and it's not exactly how it would be stored actually there are around 32 zeros before this one or I should say rather 31 because all the other zeros are used whenever a large number is stored and these all numbers are in the powers of 2 so this number is 2 raised to the power 0 into 0 plus 2 raised to the power 1 into 1 plus 2 raised to the power 0 2 raised to the power 3 into 0 and so on so let's just not talk about this because this is a whole other another chapter so what we were talking about is the string one now with the include string library or header file what we can do is we can make use of strings just like we used to make use of the integer or number types so let's say I create a na variable string name and I do cn name and I see out hello name so let's try to run this program and let's enter my name and as you can see it says me hello mehul now it is not possible with a character for example if you type character name and then you see in name in hello name now what would happen is since name is a character it would just take one letter and then it will quit so the subsequent information which we are entering is thrown away so you see that it only gives me hello m instead of hello me so in this case what we can do next is create an array of characters which is c style but we would make use of string which is c plus plus style so this makes life a lot easier and simple to use because with clear definition what string is and with the string data type we could actually manipulate the string with a lot of inbuilt uh, methods the string file provides us so overall I would say that you should better use string over traditional character strings because you know they are not just safe to handle with some null bytes which we'll be talking soon so I guess this much introduction to header files would be simple enough for you to start with C++ and in the next tutorial I will be possibly discussing you about um, namespace which we have been using this line so far so that's all for this tutorial and I'll see you next time so don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching